Ninth. NJC suspends Chief Judges of Rivers, Anambra over alleged judicial misconduct. International NGO, African Peace Initiative for Good Governance, APIFGG, inaugurate state chapter executives in Kogi. DIG Alabi assures security for Ondo State governorship election. And in sports, Netflix hopes for live sports knockout with Paul Tyson fights. A very warm welcome to you. This is Malakai TV Global News, reaching your life from the city of Lokoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Gift Daniel. Thanks for joining. The Supreme Court on Friday dismissed a lawsuit filed by 19 state governments to challenge the constitutionality of the laws establishing the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, and the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, NFIU. The Apex Court, in a unanimous decision by a seven-member panel, ruled that the state's claims lacked merit and substance. Delivering the lead judgment, Justice Umwani Abba Aji affirmed that the EFCC created by an act of the National Assembly is neither illegal nor unlawful. The court upheld the powers of the EFCC, ICPC and NFIU to arrest and prosecute offenders. The state had argued that the EFCC Establishment Act of 2004 violated Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution, claiming that the process of domestication for the international conventions, specifically the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, was not followed. However, the Supreme Court rejected this reasoning, emphasizing that the anti-corruption bodies are empowered by the valid legislation passed at the federal level. The ruling solidifies the operational authority of these agencies across all states in Nigeria. The states that initiated the suits include Ondo, Edo, Oyo, Kogi, Ogun, Nasarawa, Kebi, Katsina, Sokoto, Jigawa, Enugu, Benwell, Anambra, Plateau, Cross River, and Niger. However, at the resumed hearing on October 22, Imo, Bauchi, and Oshun states joined the suits as co-plaintiffs, while Anambra, Eboi, and Adamawa states announced their decisions to withdraw from the suits. The National Judicial Council, NJC, has suspended J.C. Aguma, judge of a state high court in Rivers, for alleged judicial misconduct. The council also suspended A.O. Nwambunike, an Umbra State High Court judge, for the same offense. According to a statement by the council on Friday, both chief judges are barred for performing judicial functions for a period of one year without pay and will be placed on a work list for two years thereafter. The council said the decision will reach at its 107th meeting chaired by Kadirat Kekere Ekun. Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN, on November 13 and 14. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on Thursday, brought a Chinese Zhenjiang Jin before an Ikeja Special Offenses Court by alleged bribery and 301 million fraud. Jin was arraigned on a four-count chart bordering on retention of stolen property, bribery and stealing. The EFCC counsel, Mr. Ahmad Yusman, told the court that the defendant allegedly committed the offenses between March 5 and August 9 in Lagos. He alleged that the defendant dishonestly retained an aggregate sum of 301 million naira in his account number 18613902260, demosaurus in Assets Bank, which belonged to Golden Diamond Industrial Manufacturing Company Limited. The prosecutor submitted that the defendant, while working at the company, accepted directly into his bank account the said money as kickbacks from vendors 
thereby conferring undue advantage to himself. The Kogi State Coordinator Hanatu Umar has inaugurated an extension of an Ethiopian non-governmental organization, African Peace Initiative for Good Governance, APIFGG, a humanitarian peace building organization in the state. The inauguration which took place in Lokoja has its members gorgeously dressed in white and green, which connotes the symbol of peace and fertility. The state coordinator Hanatu, who gave out letters of appointment to new executives and local government license officers. The new executive took the oath of office accordingly. <laughs> objectives and expected them to avoid political partisans to deliver optimally. We are to promote the and to protect. We are for human rights, our people, foster peace. We are to ensure security. We are to support democratic governance. We are to provide humanitarian assistance. We have to build capacity and empower communities. We have to reach an advocacy. We have to promote gender equality. <clears throat> we have to, prom uh, to promote security of lives, to protect the security of life and properties of the citizens and many others. The union is well structured to cover areas of human development. We are non-political. We are defend, we are to defend humanity. This structure is from the continent headquarters at Addis Ababa. Equally use this opportunity to appreciate the executive members from the maximum corporation, most especially my humble and capacity program manager, Honorable Alhaji Abdullah Beida, for his immense contribution to APGG, to my capacity secretary manager of this union in this state, Malam Ibrahim O. Gambo, thank you for your selfless services and sacrifice. May God Almighty elevate you in all your ramifications. Among the just inaugurated executives is the state program coordinator, Beida Abdullahi. He thanked the state governor, Ahmed Ododo, for his leadership style that has paved the way for more international NGOs like APIFGG, and investors to thrive. Beira also used the occasion to encourage ESCO members to abide by the association's do's and don'ts if they must achieve positive desired results. I congratulate myself, I congratulate the state coordinator, our mommy, I congratulate leaders from various local government. May this be our starting point. Those of us who have been recognized with position of responsibility, I want to give us an advice. Yes, leadership is being appointed by God, not man. That is why once you are called to lead a movement, to lead an organization, to belong to a society, you have to be responsible in doing it. Because every step you take for the progress of that movement, you have a reward for it. I also congratulate the governor of the state, His Excellency Alhaj Ahmad Usman Ododo. Yes, we have started seeing positive change. The citizens are happy. We are seeing development, more opportunities have started entering the state, which 
African Peace Initiative is also one out of those opportunities. May God help his government, help all his appointee to lead the state to the promised land. APIFGG has its headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia with chapters across nations and states in Nigeria. It is established by Edward M. Power in the first quarter of the year 2024 as a humanitarian peace building organization and human capacity. We got a short break. We'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here. For your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news, choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV. With entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. Minister of Federal Capital Territory, Nyesom Wiki, has suspended the Executive Secretary, Federal Capital Development Authority, FCDA, Engineer Shehu Hadi Ahmad, indefinitely. According to a statement on Thursday by Lere Olainka, Senior Special Assistant on Public Communications and New Media to the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, FCT, the suspension of Hadi Ahmad is with immediate effect. The suspended Executive Secretary has consequently been directed to hand over the Director of Engineering Services, engineer in the FCDA. Meanwhile, Nyesom Wike has revealed that President Bola Tinubu ordered the construction of houses for judges in Abuja. The former River State Governor said the project is part of the government's plan to provide secure housing for judges and strengthen the judiciary's independence. The Governing Council of the Federal University, Lokoja, Kogi State, has approved the dispersal of four lecturers over allegations of sexual harassment and examination misconduct. The decision was made during the Council's second meeting, chaired by Senator Victor Undoma Eba, which was recently held in Lokoja. The Council praised the University's management for following due process in investigating the allegations. Reaffirming its commitment to a zero-tolerance policy towards unethical behavior, the Council made it clear that misconducts of any kind will not be tolerated at the institution. It also instructed the University to expedite the resolution of other pending cases, particularly one in the Faculty of Science that has recently attracted media attention. The Council urged staff and faculty members to uphold high ethical standards and encourage students to report any incidents of harassment. Deputy Inspector General of Police, DIG Sylvester Alabi, has assured the readiness of the Nigerian police and other security agencies for the November 16 governorship election in Ondo State. Alabi gave the assurance by briefing newsmen on Thursday in Akure after meeting with the head of security agencies in the state. According to him, the Nigerian police force is set for the election with adequate preparations and measures. He said the police had commenced the effective deployment of personnel across the three senatorial districts. The effective deployment of our personnel across the three central districts, 18 local government areas, 203 wards, and 3,903 police units has commenced Governor police officers and tactical elements of the force, comprising the police mobile force, special protection unit, counterterrorism unit, explosive ordnance unit, and the special intervention squad, are already on ground. Provide level playing field on ground 
for all contesting candidates, irrespective of party affiliations or status. Ensure that all electoral campaigns and rallies are peacefully held and in, in accordance with the laid down laws and regulations. Ensuring security, secured environment for successful and the peaceful conduct of elections throughout the state. Provision of adequate security for election officials and materials from all takeoff points to their respective destinations and vice versa. Maintenance of law and order at all polling units and all collision centers. And I said the police is collaborating with all stakeholders and other security agencies to ensure a peaceful conduct of the election. Few as to the governorship election in Ondo State, three governorship candidates have withdrawn from the election. And thus, in Governor Lucky Urimi Son Ayedotsiwa of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The candidates are of the Accord Party, the National Rescue Movement, NRM, and the African Democratic Congress, ADC. The endorsement came during the solidarity visits to the governor, where Ajibola Falaye, candidate of the Accord Party, speaking on behalf of the three parties, praised Governor Ayedotiwa's dedication to the progress of Ondo State and cited his achievements in office. The other two are the governorship candidates of the NRM, Jenyo Ataonoko, and the deputy governorship candidate of the ADC, Olaide Rashid Ibrahim. Father yesterday that their decision to back the governor for Saturday's election was based on observations of his long-standing commitment to public service, tracing back to his time as the deputy governor. We have been watching him, and his doors are always open to all. Father is stated, commending the governor for his inclusive approach to governance and for prioritizing the welfare of residents. He pointed to the governor's record of security, stating, the state has been experiencing relative peace under his watch, which reflects his commitment to safeguarding the lives of our people. The Accord candidates also noted the shared values of progressive politics and goals that NRM, ADC, and Accord find in alignment with Aida Tiwa's administration. Governor Aida Tiwa warmly welcomed the candidate's decision to unite behind him describing it as an act of statesmanship. The Governor of Benway State, Reverend Father Nyasit Alia, and the Director General of the campaign, Abiola Makinde, among others, joined Governor Aida Tsiwa to receive the three candidates. The Niger State House of Assembly has urgently called for the establishment of a security camp at Wayam in Rafi local government area to curb the rising threats of banditry and kidnapping in the region. The Assembly also urged the federal government to deploy security personnel to appraise the camp once constructed. The motion was presented by Zuberu Ismaila, the representative for Rafi constituency, who highlighted the recent increase in attacks on local communities, including a deadly raid on Wayam on November 5, 2024 that left seven dead, several injured, and 21 people abducted. Ismaila stressed that without the establishment of the security camp, residents would remain vulnerable to further attacks. The motion was unanimously adopted by the Assembly after deliberations. Next is Sports Updates. Heavyweight champion Mike Tyson and social media influencer turned fighter Jake Paul on Friday is the latest one two punch from Netflix as the media giant hopes to cash in on sports sprints to streaming. The intergenerational showdown has all the makings of a crossover hit with 58 year old Tyson bringing in the old guard and 27 year old Paul who achieved early fame on YouTube appealing to the younger, screen-tooting social media junkies.
Language Film Festival, AILFF24, is thrilled to announce the appointment of Hannah Uwaso as its new coordinator for the upcoming festival, set to take place at the Amphitheater Film Village in the film city in Asaba Delta State. This year's festival theme, showcasing Africa's cultural and tourism riches through filmmaking, underscores the festival's commitment to highlighting the continent's diverse cultural landscape and its potential for tourism through the art of cinema. Hannah Wonso is a seasoned film production professional known for her adeptness at delivering quality content for both cinema and television. Over her 10-year career, she has successfully managed a range of productions from high-end projects to small-scale endeavors, showcasing her versatility and commitment to the craft. Wonso's four year of supervisory experience across various units of film production from creative development to distribution, position her as an invaluable asset for the festival. An imaginative author and writer, Wansaw is well versed in story research, development, and screenwriting, further enhancing her qualifications for the role. She is the producer and writer of Bitter Rain, currently showing on Amazon Prime Video, which has been praised for its compelling narrative and production quality. Additionally, she served as both producer and executive producer for Mercy Line, also available on Amazon Prime Video in North America, TVOD, and Side Hands, dubbed an interesting flick in her new capacity as coordinator of AILFF24, who also aims to celebrate and promote the diverse linguistic and cultural heritage of Africa through film. Her vision for the festival includes showcasing indigenous stories, fostering talent, and creating an engaging platform for filmmakers who communicate through their native languages. This aligns perfectly with the festival's theme of showcasing Africa's cultural and tourism riches, which also we integrate into their program. of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tao Reed Lagwaja commenced at the National Christian Center in Abuja. Present for the service are President Bola Tinubu's wife, Senator Uluremi Tinubu, senior military personnel for Nigerian and abroad, friends, family members, associates, government officials, and members of the diplomatic corps. President's wife and Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinubu, in her goodwill message, prayed for the immediate family of the late Lagwaja. He had fought a good fight. He had finished his course. He kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for him a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give him at that day. And I believe he has received his crowns already. My thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Mrs. Maria Biodo, Lagbaja children, family, friends, colleagues, and associates. May Lieutenant General Lagbaja's good works and legacy live on. The sermon was delivered by the church priests. We must thus make deliberate efforts to achieve victory in all spheres of our endeavors so as to live happy and fulfilled lives. The lives and times of Lieutenant General Tauri Abiodun Lagbaja was one that depicted victory. His passion for victory was not only intense, but literally palpable. He desired success and he was deliberate towards the attainment of such. His military prowess throughout his career and passion for success earned him uncommon endearment. On his appointment as the 23rd Chief of Army Staff, the warlord knew from experience that victory 
at the front line is precipitated basically by training, equipment, and motivation. Little wonder, and as captured in his vision, he sought to transform the Nigerian army into a well-trained, equipped, and motivated force towards achieving the army's constitutional responsibilities within a joint environment. Vice President Shetima Kashim, Minister of Defense, all representatives of security agents, dignitaries, and top government officials were all present at the National Military Cemetery. Chief of Defense Staff and Acting Chief of Army Staff read their messages to bid late Lieutenant General Labaja farewell. May God grant him eternal rest and strengthen us as we continue the noble course to which he dedicated his life. Farewell, gallant soldier. Farewell, our brother and leader. May you find peace among the saints and eternal honor in the annals of history. That is our work. Willingly assuming additional responsibilities with a steadfast sense of purpose. His patriotism was unmarked leaving indelible marks of excellence and distinction everywhere he served. The late Chief of Army Staff achieved an uncommon service record by, command, by commanding an elite infantry special forces battalion twice, two infantry brigades, and two infantry divisions. Known for his forthright and principled approach, he was a senior officer whose extensive experience and gift of imparting knowledge enriched those around him profoundly. As Chief of Army Staff, his command philosophy was firmly focused on transforming the Nigerian Army into a well trained, equipped, and highly motivated force towards achieving its constitutional responsibilities within a joint environment. President Tinubu described the late Labaja as a prudent man who served his nation diligently. A general and officer who symbolized the best of his profession and whose commitment to the nation he loved was singular and undiluted. For me, he was a trusted advisor whose formidable intellect and breadth of knowledge served this nation well. More than that, he was also a man of prudent action who cared more for his nation and for those who served under him than he ever did for himself. Yet, the hand of God works in his own sovereign way. The plans of God we cannot fully discern at a time when a service to the nation could mean so much so much. God took him, took him home to serve in the celestial army. His departure could cause us great dismay. However, Lebanon General Tari, the Abiyadun Lagbaja, will not want sorrow to overtake us. It has been said that the brave never die. 
They have courage to have a thousand living men. So be it then. May the courage with which Lebanon General Lagwaja served and now shine for live in the in each and every one of us. Lagwaja died last week Tuesday at the age of 56 after an undisclosed ailment. He was appointed as Chief of Army Staff by President Bola Tinubu on June 19, 2023. He was survived by a wife and three children. Late Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant Labaja was laid to rest at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja. May his soul rest in peace. And this is where we wrap it up on today's news. For more information or contributions and advert placements, please call the numbers displayed on your screen. Join us daily to watch our news and other exciting programs that will brighten your day. You can also subscribe to all our social media handles to watch our previous and subsequent programs. We are Malakite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Please be your brothers and sisters keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Gift Daniel. Thanks for watching.